Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today is gonna be a great video. It's a special request from the net 2001 and it's a detailed workflow how to design a screw retained crown on a tie base. I also added a bonus feature on how to add your company logo on the printed model. If you have any special requests for videos like the net 2001, Thank you again for this great comment. Please leave them in the section below and I will do my best to accommodate for every video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and hit the notification bell to get updated on all future videos. To the video the order form is nothing special click number 20 in this case it's my restoration side um, an atomic crown i'm going to use zirconia in this restoration it's of course screw retained it's a screw retained video if you have a separate scan body scan like in this case hit the green button that's extra scan body if the scan body is embedded in the main scan use the gray button if you just scan in the tie base use the yellow button after that, just click OK, select a shade from the shade menu, select digital impression. This is a digital impression with a scan flag in there. Hit save and then we can go into the design. When you orientate the arches, upper arches are up and lower arches are down like a U shape. That's important, especially when you come to all on four and align scan bodies. When it comes to aligning the scan bodies in this case, you have to know your implant manufacturer. In this case, it's DES. I know for a fact it's Noble Biocare. It's Noble Biocare Active. That's what you have to know. You also have to know the size. It's an RP. So you don't order the wrong tie base. So then we have to select the scan flag from the ExoCAD manual. And I put mine already in the favorite. You can choose between the Orum. That's a golden one. It's an angulated screw channel. And you can choose between the gray one, the straight one. And it's a straight screw channel out of the access hall. For this example, I'm going to use the angulated screw channel so I can show you how I design it and how I play with the angulations. Click on the yellow one. We're going to select RP. So we also have to select RP from the ExoCAD menu. Then we have to select between engaging and not engaging. All single units are engaging, all bridges are not engaging. That's important to know. You don't want to make a bridge with engaging tie bases. This, this is a really interesting feature here. You can play with the size, how ExoCAD is recognizing the scan body, just in case it is very deeply buried into the tissue. That makes it easier and makes the alignment much, much better. Click at bed fits matching and ExoCAD will align the scan body really nicely. It's really easy. If your clinician did a really good job of training the tissue, you can click on pre-conditioning tissue and put four dots around the emergence profile. ExoCAD will automatically identify the emergence profile. If you click next, ExoCAD actually does a really nice job of presenting you with proposal of the crown design. If you don't want this, go on no adaptation. You can also choose your new library. I usually have an HD library as my favorite and as my go-to library. You can also go to expert mode. In an expert mode, you can change in load model T's, load custom model T's. You can choose your library. ExoCAD will reduce it to the original size and then you have to size it correctly so it fits into the arch. I'm doing this here, I'm fitting it. Make sure implant crowns are usually not the right size compared to the rest of the teeth. When it comes to designing the emergence profile, I personally think that 3Shape did a much better job here in designing the emergence profile. You can still change the top part and the bottom, the bottom part. Overall, what you want to take care of, you want to fill out the gap in the emergence profile with your crown. You don't want to have too much tissue pressure and you don't want to have too less tissue pressure. So you create a gap where can food accumulate. 
Overall, play with the sliders. You can modify the position of these sliders. But the most important part is in the advanced mode. In the advanced mode, you can have clickable or draggable. I'm going to select draggable. I'm going to show you what this means. You're going to drag the screw channel. In this case, I don't need to do it, but everything is green. It's still okay. When it goes into the red part, milling machines usually have a hard time milling everything over 15 degrees. In this case, we're going to go with zero. We don't need an angulated screw channel. Then we're going to go to an atomic and free form. And there I'm going to raise the emergence profile a little bit. I'm going to bug out the lingual contour just a little bit so it's more in line. And then ExoCAD has a really nice feature when it comes to adapting the contacts. You're going to go in there and it's like filling out the undercuts with wax. I really like this feature. This makes it so much easier to see the crown. And when it comes to the occlusion, there are some certain guidelines on implants we need to follow. I listed them down here. In this case, we have an implant against an opposing tooth. So we need to reduce the occlusion by 48 microns. That's the same as 0.048 millimeters. So what we're going to do, we're going to enter 0.04 millimeters into the occlusion, hit static occlusion and ExoCAD will cut the occlusion automatically. When it comes to the screw channel, we don't need this feature here. This feature is only if you layer a crown, if you layer porcelain around this area. So we just click off. Then we can add an articulator function. We can align it. We can record the articulator movements and we can adapt it and we can apply it into the occlusion under dynamic occlusion. This will automatically reduce all the interferences in the crown. And that's basically complete the design of a screw retained crown on a tie base. But I think the most important part comes now when we're going to design the model. I want to show you a really, really cool feature that we're going to do here. We're going to add the company logo onto a printed model. Therefore, we just go through the standard features of the model design. We can add gingival tissue. We want to demonstrate here how to make a mask by adding the points. It's not that difficult. And I am going over all these features in a different video, actually. I put the link in the description. But when it comes to personalize your printed model, I think that is a great, great feature of what I'm going to show you how to put your company logo on the printed model. Therefore, we have to go into export. And in export mode, we're going to right click on the model that we want to adapt. We want to freeform the model. And then we're going to go to attachment. In this case, I'm going to start with subtract first. We're going to load the company logo all the way. We're going to click rotate. Then we're going to resize it and put it in the right direction where we want to have it. I'm going to put it at the end here where it's not disturbing anything. And I'm going to apply it. And that's all it is. How I made this logo, I'm actually showing in the video where I'm going to cut out the Detroit logo out of the front tools. I'm going to put the link in the description. And you can follow this one. I don't want to go into detail how I made this logo. It's a really, really cool workflow. And you can apply it on many different scenarios here. I'm going to put it in the model. And it looks pretty good. And that's basically completes the entire workflow of designing a screw retained crown on a tie base with a printed model. I put this as a little bonus in there because otherwise the video would be way too short. Then you can print the model. You have to put on the analog into the space. In some cases, you have to push it in you have to put some force in there. That usually works really well. But that was really it. It's not really difficult. It's a very simple workflow and you can do it too. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up, leave a nice comment in the comment section and share it with your friends. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please hit the subscription button, hit the notification bell to get updated on all future videos. Until then, stay tuned.